Fair Use Notice. This video may contain copyright materials, the use of which has not been specifically authorised by the copyright owner. We are making such material available for the purposes of criticism, comment, review and news reporting which constitutes the fair use of any such copyright materials as provided for in section 107 of the US Copyright Law and sections 29 and 30 of the UK Copyright Design and Patent Act 1988. The fair use of a copyrighted work for purposes such as criticism, comment, review and news reporting is not an infringement of copyright. <music>i was just taking some photos. Yeah, you're not allowed to take, uh, which uh, photos are you taking? Just like, photos of the building. Yeah, uh, from but don't take our building. I mean, the other buildings, you're more than welcome. But you need permission, you can't just take pictures like that. I was just taking some photos. Yeah, you're not allowed to take uh, which uh, photos you take. Just like photos of the building. I don't take our building. I mean, the other buildings, you're more than welcome. But you need permission. You can't just take pictures like that. So, is that is this um, public land or private land here? I mean, pri this is, uh, I mean, the council, but from there, from this to here, you're not allowed to stand here. Oh, so like so the bit where the... Oh, know, yeah. That's all right. But from there to here. But if you need to take pictures of this building, yeah. you need to take permission from us. You can't just... Oh, like, so I have to apply for a permission. Yeah. Uh, you all right? It's a private estate. Uh, with permission to take pictures of the building. So... Uh, with permission from the estate office if you want to take some pieces of the building. Oh, right. So, uh, private estate here. All oh, right. So if, even if I'm on public land, like on the street, I still need a like a yeah, building manager permission yeah. or something like that. Okay. Um, so how would I go about getting that? Um, like, would just I? inside the block number six. Okay, and the then state office in there, so. and then that will be able to say that I can sort of stand yeah, here and shoot. Be, yeah. Okay. Do I have to pay for that or? I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure. Okay. So okay. Private company. Or uh, or just hobby? just just photo hobby. Yeah. Yeah. So am I? Um, what about on the other side of the road? Is that the same or? You might be okay, but Okay, so the other side would be alright, but maybe not this side because yeah. of... Yeah, okay, alright. Can't stop you if you're across that net. So what about this pavement? Is that pri public? I feel this pavement. Public, okay. Alright, well, thanks mate, thanks for your time. Well, Cheers. as you can see, I'm getting an awful lot of hassle. You know, these security guards are incredibly suspicious of me and they, they really talk like they've got the law on their sides. But the question is, do they? So that's a really interesting question that lots of photographers simply do not know the answers to. So we've come to our local police station where we're joined by Inspector Malcolm Graham, who also happens to be a photographic enthusiast. So 
Malcolm, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, the million dollar question is what can we and can't we take photographs of in the UK? Pretty much you can take photographs of anything you want to. Um, certainly if you're in a public place. There are some restrictions. Uh, the Official Secrets Act prevents you from taking pictures of, uh, shall we say, military establishments um, and that sort of thing. Um, but other than that, in public place, you can do what you like. OK, so actually very, very simple and very clear cut. Um, what can't you, just by way of common sense, what can't you, what shouldn't you take photographs of, regardless of whether you're legally entitled to or not. Everybody's worried about terrorism in this day and age. Terrorism in this day and age. Last week the terrorist threat was lowered from severe to just substantial, but there is no terrorists. There are throughout the UK numerous, shall we say, sensitive locations, um, and if you start taking pictures of those, especially if you're taking detailed, involved pictures of them, you might find yourself coming under uh, scrutiny of the police to find out what it is that you're doing. Um, there are also other areas of activity. Uh, if you're photographing a person and you're constantly photographing that person and following them around the streets, you might find that there are uh, stalking implications here. Photographing children, even in public places, uh, often comes under uh, scrutiny as well. Somebody will turn up and ask you what it is that you're doing. The fact is, you can still take pictures of them, um, but you just have to be a little bit careful about upsetting and annoying other people. That's the biggest risk to, uh, to photographers, I think. Basically, the police won't have a right to stop you from photographing at all, um, unless you're going to be arrested for an offence, um, associated or not associated with the taking of those pictures. Um, in which case, yes, they're obviously going to stop you doing it then. Um, there are circumstances um, where if you're going to be searched under provisions of the Terrorism Act that uh, your camera and, and what you are doing with that camera constitute um, evidence of the offence that you're going to be arrested for, in which case they would be seized then. But other than that, no. no. And are there any instances when a security guard, for example, could stop you? Security guards, a difficult situation because if they're in private premises, um, like a shopping centre for instance, a, a security guard will ask you to leave if they don't like you photographing, um, tell you to stop or leave, or leave the premises. They can't seize your equipment, um, they can simply exercise the, the proprietary powers of the, of the site that they're on. Um, you might not always know that you're on private premises and so just be a little bit wary of that. And is there a right way and a wrong way to react uh, when approached in public, whether it's by a police officer, a PCSO, security? Politely. Um, they may not know the law, and they may think they do, um, and often they will, but they won't always. Um, if you disagree with them, disagree with them politely, ask them what authority and power they have to, to ask or demand what they're demanding. If they're simply asking, then that's a different kettle of fish. If they're demanding that you do something, ask for the authority and the power that they're doing it. And if you still disagree with them, find out who they are. Um, but I would suggest that you still comply, or otherwise it, it can just spiral. And does a police officer have the right to confiscate, take away gear, or force someone to delete uh, photographs? If they're arrested for the offence, then your property will be seized at that point. Um, your property generally will be seized if you're arrested anyway. If it's evidence of the offence, it might be some time before you get it back. Um, but nobody's going to be deleting anything without a court order or similar. It's a quite clear curse, actually, that. OK. I suspect certain articles are going to be found uh, must exist before search. Essentially, the searching officer has to suspect that you're a terrorist before they're going to be searching you. So is photography as an activity in itself enough to warrant suspicion from a police officer? Suspicion, yes. Curiosity is probably a, a, a better thing. If you're taking a photograph, you may well attract the attention of the police um, and the circumstances will dictate, in a sense, how far they're going to go with it. Um, if you're taking detailed pictures of the underside of a flyover, you might attract more attention than if you're taking uh, pictures of a, a picturesque gateway of Peterborough Cathedral, for instance. Right.